I woke up before the sun had a chance to cross the horizon. It was a warm early spring day and I was looking forward to getting out into nature for some much needed decompression time. So I laced up my boots and hefted my rucksack, I mainly went through all the gear I'd packed, just in case I'd have to survive out here in the woods for a few days. The weight of the pack was a comfort to me, reminding me of the physical and mental challenges I'd already overcome as a Navy SEAL. So I started up the coastal mountain trails. Sweat dripped down my forehead and pulled into the crevices of my neck and around my biceps. I wore a thin shirt that clung to my chest, showing off the physique I had worked so hard to attain. Scars on my arms and chest told the story of the hardships I had endured as a SEAL, but I wore them with pride. The scenery around me was breathtaking. I couldn't help but marvel at the beauty of it all. The sun was starting to peek out from behind the mountains, casting a warm glow over everything. It was just me and the sounds of nature, my footsteps crunching on the gravel as I took in the sights around me. I knew that this hike wouldn't exactly help me prepare for future missions. It was a cakewalk. But for now, I was content to just enjoy the moment. Scars that crisscross my skin tell the story of my time as a SEAL. A life that has been anything but easy. But out here, surrounded by nature, I can let go of the weight of the world and just be. As the afternoon passed by with ease, the warmth of the sun was a welcome companion on my journey. I began to scope out potential areas to set up camp for the night. The sky was still bright blue and I knew that the sun would be setting within the next few hours. That's when I heard it. A muffled sound. Someone yelling for help. In an instant, I was on high alert. I unsheathed my large knife and approached the noise, ready for anything. What I found surprised me. It was a younger hiker, only a few years my junior, covered in dirt, sweat, his ankle bleeding from being trapped in a hole. I sheathed my weapon with a sigh. I could see the fear and the pain in his eyes. And for the first time in a while, I felt empathy. I saw myself in him from pre-military and immediately went to help him. Holding my hands, palms out, and the universal calm down sign. Easy there, soldier. As I knelt before the hiker, I was struck by the intensity of his teal green eyes, a color that reminded me of the Mediterranean waters I had just left on my last mission. His dark brown hair was a mess, either from sweat or a rain shower, and it brushed across one of those stunning eyes. I had the urge to reach out and brush his hair away, to see those eyes in all of their glory. Jesus, what is wrong with me? Shaking my head, I cleared those erroneous thoughts and focused on the task at hand. But the hiker, who was actually closer to my age than I previously thought, well, he was clearly ashamed and cast his gaze down, intimidated by my presence. I didn't like seeing such darkness in someone so pure and innocent. I had been trained to keep those dark thoughts at bay, to protect those with light from being weighed down by them. And this young man had an abundance of light, with few visible scars to mar his spirit. I knew I had to help him, to protect him from the shadows that threatened to darken his spirit. As I knew though, not all scars are visible. My ease closer to him, the one piercing teal green eye that seemed to hold secrets I was desperate to uncover, peering up at me. I stilled. Again, what the hell is wrong with me? I needed to get him out of that damn hole. Here. I handed him my canteen, watching as he eagerly gulped down the water. Couldn't help but notice how his throat moved as he drank, and I found myself staring. Easy there, soldier, I said, trying to hide the grin that threatened to break out. You don't want to make yourself sick. He lowered the canteen, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. He thanked me in a soft voice, 
and was hesitant as he told me he thought he was a goner. I shook my head with a laugh, slinging my pack over my shoulder and onto the ground beside my well-worn boots. Not on my watch. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off about him. Or right. That, that he was hiding something? I don't know, but for now, I pushed those thoughts aside, focusing on the task at hand. After all, I was a SEAL. I had a job to do. As I examined the young man's ankle, I saw it was ensnared in some gnarly roots. It had grown deep into the ground. I had to carefully cut them away with my knife, taking great care not to hurt him any further. He winced in pain as I worked, and I could see the sweat pouring down his face. I knew he was still thirsty, so I, I prompted him to drink more water from my canteen, glancing up as he greedily drank from it again. His eyes closed in relief as the cool water flowed down his parched throat. As absurd as it sounds, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt for not being able to prevent this from happening to him. But I pushed those thoughts aside and I focused on getting him out of this hole. I was told I had a Superman complex that I couldn't save everyone. Screw everyone else. It's something I'm working through. With one hand holding his ankle and the other using the knife to cut away the roots, I worked steadily and carefully feeling his skin under my fingers and taking care to be gentle. Unlike the way I had been with so many other things in my life. How long you been stuck here? I asked. My voice gentle as I carefully examined the twirled roots that had ensnared his ankle like a snake. The young man looked up at me, his eyes wide with fear and with pain. Since last night? His voice croaks, his throat dry and scratchy. You ran out of water this morning? No wonder. I nod, my mind already calculating the amount of time it'll take to get me back to my camp and get this guy the help he needs. In your gear? Wash down the cliff in a storm? He nodded, ashamed. God, that look again. The submissive motion spiked something akin to anger in me. I took his chin in hand and lifted his gaze back up to my own. No shame in that. Gear can be replaced. Your life can't. My voice was firm but not unkind. The younger man nodded again, gratitude in his eyes. I could see that he was in a lot of pain, but he didn't complain. For a normie, he was tough. Not seal tough. But he needed medical attention as soon as possible. What's your name? I'll shake his hand in a firm grip, my hand much larger and not near as soft as his. Why is this dude making me think about hands? Nice to meet you. I helped him to his feet, taking care not to put too much weight on his injured ankle, and wrapped his arm around my shoulder. As he hobbled away from the hole, I took stock of the situation. We were still several miles from my destination, and it was getting dark. I needed to find a suitable place to set up camp and tend to this guy's injuries. Our pace was slow, but for some reason, neither of us seemed to mind. You're going to be okay. I said more to reassure myself than the injured man. I've got you. We walked in silence for a while. The only sound was the crunching of leaves underfoot. We made our way up the trail couldn't shake the feeling that I had been sent here for a reason. Maybe it was fate that had brought me here. Maybe this was a chance to right some of the wrongs I've made in my life. Whatever the case may be, as far as I could tell, this wasn't one of those wrongs. I pushed the thought aside and focused on the task at hand. Again. What was it about being out here in the woods and off-duty that made my brain start to question all sorts of strange things? Off duty or not, I had a mission to accomplish, to get this guy to safety. The sun was setting and we needed to find a place to set up camp for the night. In the morning, I'd climb higher to get a signal on my phone, call in for help. Holding him gently to my side, I scanned the area, looking for a suitable spot. Finally, I spotted a flat area next to a stream, sheltered by a grove of trees. Here, I said, helping him to sit down. 
We'll set up camp here for the night. Tomorrow, I'll get a signal to call for help. I took out his first aid kit and set to work on his ankle, cleaning the wound and wrapping it tightly. The guy winced in pain, but didn't complain. I watched him and his reactions, feeling a connection that I couldn't quite explain. Maybe I was meant to be here. Meant to be here to help him, to keep him safe. And I would do whatever it takes to make sure that he made it through the night. After starting a fire, I swiveled to him, resting on my heels. I bet you could use something to eat right about now. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I unsheathed my trusty old Mark III. This old guy has been around the block a time or two. I swiveled my blade in the firelight, taking a good look at it. It was definitely on the, now that's a knife, size of things. I just liked it because it fit nicely in my big ass hands. But no, I don't have to hunt for our dinner, here. I tossed him one of my meal bars. Not as badass, but less messy. After rifling through my med pack, I tossed him a bottle of pain meds. Now that you have something on your stomach, take these. These should get you through the night until I can call for help in the morning. After sitting and eating in silence for a while, I look up and chance a conversation. How's the ankle? Think I'll be running a marathon in the AM? Run a marathon? <laughs> I cringe inwardly at how stupid I sound. Conversation usually wasn't my forte, but something about him made me extra nervous. Being nervous wasn't my usual MO at all. <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't forced to run all day every day as a SEAL, I would only run if I was being chased by zombies too. Hey, you look like you game. You have any current favorites? Our conversation took off and we chatted and laughed for what seemed like hours. The moon and crackling of the fire are the only witnesses. I chuckled. Me too. I may currently rank in Call of Duty, but that doesn't make me a bro nacho. Watch out, I might take offense and start crying. At some point I'd move closer so to better hear him. I reached out my boot and gave a friendly tap to his good shoe while I tore it a strip of jerky. At least I'm not a noob in real life and go getting stuck in holes and shit. Oh god, did I just say that? I'm sorry man, I didn't mean that. Ashamed, I looked up with an apology in my eyes, only to be relieved to find him staring back at me with a grin. Okay, so he can take a playful hit. Just because he could didn't mean I was game. For some reason, everything was different with him. My Navy brothers, we dissed each other constantly. I didn't feel like ribbing with him. It didn't give the same pleasure. Strained for knowing him only a few hours now. But I only felt a strong sense of protection towards him. Uh, I'll set up the tent and you can sleep inside. I'll stay out here and keep watch. He grabs my hand as I pass by, stopping me. Our touch lingers a little bit longer than necessary. The words he speaks next are so soft, I wanted to hold on to them forever. But instead, I let my hand slip away. Uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. His crystal teal eyes look so dejected and sad I inwardly strangle myself. No, no! Walking away from this is not what I want. Don't be an idiot. And don't think, only be. So instead I say, yeah, actually you're right. It is going to get pretty chilly tonight. We could use the warmth. There. There it is again. That slight, shy smile and beautiful, intense look. I'd do anything to be wrapped up in that sensation I felt just now. Being on the receiving end of that stare every day, any day. We lay side by side in the tent. Couldn't help but feel a growing connection with the other hiker. His warmth and kindness were contagious. And I felt myself drawn to him in a way that was new. It was unexpected. Like outside with the campfire, we talked for hours, sharing stories and laughing at each other's jokes. 
I felt a sense of ease and comfort with him that I had never experienced before. As the night wore on and the fire outside died down, he huddled closer to my side, seeking warmth and comfort. My heart ramped up and the sound of my throat working to swallow was loud in my ears. It was then that he reached out his hand and took mine in his. It was then that I realized that this hiker was more than just a grateful stranger. He was someone I could see myself growing close to. Someone I wanted to get to know better. I always felt like something was different about myself. Like a puzzle piece that didn't quite fit in with the others. With society. But I never dared to explore those feelings. Never allowed myself to acknowledge the possibility that I might not follow the strict path everyone else followed in the terms of love. Being in the military, I knew that such a revelation could be career-ending, or even worse. So I'd push those thoughts deep down, buried them beneath layers of discipline and duty. But now, as I lay in the tent with this beautiful soul that I had helped save, I couldn't ignore the truth any longer. The way that he touched me, his gratitude expressed in the goosebumps that sent shivers down my spine. He had awakened something inside me that I had dared never to confront. I felt a deep internal struggle, torn between the life I had always known and the possibility of something different, something new. As I lay here in the tent listening to the gentle breathing of the man beside me now peacefully sleeping, I realized I had been given a gift. This fellow kindred spirit had shown me that it was possible to be free, to love and to be loved without fear. And I knew deep down I would never be the same again. We had saved each other in more ways than one and I was grateful. Grateful the chance to finally be true to myself and to find love in a way I had never dared to dream possible. I leaned over and whispered to his sleeping form. Sleep now, handsome. Tomorrow brings a new day.